Howdy, Omar. How are you, Mr. Kranz? How are you, Dr. Steve? <laughs> what should I say? <laughs> see, see, you see, you can't even do you can't even you can't even say hi to me on video in a normal way. So yeah. Uh, what, what's interesting to me about doing this is the fact that uh, I'm quite certain you're the only student in your class who, uh, rather than present their own stuff, you, you know, you're just you're just interviewing me, and so pretty sure I'm the only one that that's gonna you're the only one that's gonna be doing it this way. So, um, uh, what I what you your your topic I believe from what you've explained to me is that you're supposed to discuss anything from economics that would be interesting to the class. Is that correct? Exactly, yes. Okay, so um, what students in the class, I know, I know Dr. Fernando is aware of this, but what students in the class may not be aware of is that I am an economics major. I received my degree from, I received my economics degree from Coe College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I love economics. I consider myself an economist at heart, even though I do not teach economics, okay? So my, what I think is most important about why I chose economics as a major, I think is something that would be valuable for your classmates. Would you agree? Absolutely. Okay. So then, 100%. okay. Then uh, the reason that I, when I was a senior in high school, I had to decide the, I think the biggest decision you make in your life is deciding where you want to go to university where it is you want to, uh, where you want to go to school is the biggest decision you can make in your life and, uh, and what you want to major in. And for me, it, I had two, I came down to two options. I go to, um, and in the map behind me here, I go to uh, a school near my home, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and major in economics. Option two was to go to a school another two hours away and major in meteorology because I love weather. Like I, I love weather, studying weather, I, I, I love weather. Um, and ultimately I chose to go to, uh, I chose to go to Co and major in economics. So I've never had a class in meteorology. I've never had a class studying weather, but I do love it. And I, but I didn't go for that. I went for economics instead. Um, I then went on to, and, and I have no, I have no regrets major in economics. It's, it's the smartest thing. It's the, that of, of all the decisions of my life, choosing to go to co and choosing to major in economics, one of the best decisions I've made in my life. And the reason why it's one of the best decisions I've made in my life is that economics changes the way you think about the world. And in my view, what makes economics so great, why, why I appreciate it as a major is that one of the most important concepts in economics is what's known as opportunity cost. So I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, I don't want to put you on the spot here, Omar, too much. I wanna put, I wanna put you on the spot a little bit because you know, this is kind of supposed to be your presentation. So if you can't answer it for me here, you better have a good answer by tomorrow when, when you present this, okay? So my question for you, Omar, is what does opportunity cost mean to you? It means to me to see the available option for me and choose one, one instead of the other. So for example, uh, choosing education and instead of working at the same time. So uh, I'm not working, for example, as a part-time job or as, the, as a full-time job. And I prefer to be a student and to have a degree. Excellent. I, honestly, that, that was a great, that was a great, in my opinion, that was a great uh, answer for what opportunity cost is. And because uh, it is. Um, uh, I'm 98% I'm sure Dr. Fernando will agree with that definition. Um, so... I, the reason why I think that's so valuable for everyone to understand the concept of opportunity cost is that at the point that something becomes more attractive, at the point something becomes more interesting to you, you'll stop doing what you're doing, okay? And so if somebody came along, if somebody came along and offered you a job where you can make a million dirhams, so some, some, so some magic, some magic, 
uh, some magic gin or whatever term you guys use uh, for if, so, if somebody if somebody offered you you can make a million durhams in 2021 come work for us you wouldn't be able to do your internship you're going to have to you're going to have to take next semester or whatever you you're going to have to quit school for a year and come back later but if you work for us for for 2021 we'll pay you a million dollars would you take or million durhams million dollars doesn't matter would you take that offer omar I think I don't have to think twice about it. So yes, for sure. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, but, but that, that introduces two concepts in economics that I think are very valuable. So the first is the concept of opportunity cost. And the second is the concept of thinking at the margin. So in economics, we want, we want students to learn to think on the margin, the very next. Okay, so when I'm teaching, when I when I when I used to teach economics, which I I I really miss teaching economics. Those of you who know me, those the students who are watching this, you know me as the guy teaching management, and I'm fine teaching management because that's what I have a master's degree in. That's that's my professional degree, and I have experience in management. I have no desire to be a manager, but I have experience there and so forth. But again, at my core, at what it makes Steve Steve, I am an economist. Okay, and so opportunity cost is something I think about a lot, and I also think a lot about thinking at the margin. Okay, and in thinking at the margin, you have to decide what it is that is your next best step. Okay, and uh, so for you, you're you're a student at UAU right now. You're studying economics. You have, I believe, you have another semester left of classes, and then you want to do your internship in the fall. Is that correct? Yes, for me, yes, but some of my colleagues already will take their Yeah, I don't care. I, I'm just, just, okay. okay. This, this, is, this is where the other thing you need to know <laughs> is that when you get a degree in economics, the, the, the number one place in, in America, people get a degree in economics, most of them don't go on for a PhD in economics. They go on for degrees in public policy, which I seriously considered and wish I did. Uh, they go on for degrees in law school. They go on for degrees in other things, okay? So d don't assume that most people who major in economics then have a degree, then go on in life and do economics. They can end up being people like Steve Kranz who teaches management, <laughs> okay? So, uh, so it doesn't matter whether you're, whether you're graduating this year or, or graduating three years from now. There might be, some of your colleagues may be around for quite a long, quite a long time farther. Now, Thinking at the margin means what is best for you for the next period coming up. And if somebody offered you a million dirhams to work for them for the next year, that absolutely is the best use of your time. Not finishing your degree at Co College or Co College at, at UAU. I'm, I'm thinking back to if somebody offered me a million dollars before my senior year, I'd have been like, see ya. And I'd have, yeah, so, so I, was, I was thinking back to my world. So now we've covered opportunity cost. We've covered the idea of thinking at the margin. And we, the, the next concept that I wanna talk about is sunk cost. What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your take on sunk cost? Uh, I think sunk cost is something you pay or something you spend without, without covering it back or without it coming back. For example, uh, God forbid if you made an accident for, uh, for for your car, and then you need to replace the the parts that are, are already damaged. This is, I think, can be this the can be included as uh, sunk cost. You spent some some money on something that th this money will never come back. You know. Um, so your example of a sunk cost uh, is is fine. It's, it's it's the idea. It's the idea that that um, you, it's it's time, money, whatever that you cannot get back. It's it's done. Halas. It's over. The best example of sunk cost that that also ties in thinking at the margin. This this is leads to the rise of behavioral economics, which I have to say, behavioral economics didn't really exist when I was in school because I graduated in 1991 from college. And so behavioral economics was not a big deal back then. Um, I, I might've even gone on for a PhD if I'd have gone for behavior, behavioral economics. 
So one of the main questions that they ask, one of the, the one where you really know if you're an economist or not is if you're at a movie and you dislike the movie, you realize a half an hour into it, I really don't like this movie. The next hour of my life would be better if I just get up and walk out of the theater. Okay. Now, a good economist, if you think like an economist, you would get up and walk out of the theater. Because if you stay in the theater, you're not doing what's in your best interest for the next hour. So if you're smart, you're going to, you're going to not do anything. You're going to do what's best for the next hour and walk out of the theater. Well, I think it was sometime in the past year, the movie Joker came out, okay? And I went to the movie theater to see it because I'm a huge fan of the actor. Can't think of the name, but I'm also a huge fan of Batman. And so when Joker came out, uh, I didn't think I'd wanna see it, but I went to the movie and a half an hour into the movie, I really, 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 really did not like it. I wanted to walk out. But I went to the movie with a friend, and because I was with a friend, I thought to myself, I've got to stick around because my friend's here with me, and if I walk out, he's going to think I'm upset with him or whatever, and so I, I, can't, I can't walk out of the movie. And so we watched the whole movie, and after it was over and I talked to my friend, he said, you know, I really wanted to walk out of the movie. And I was like, really? Because I wanted to walk out too. So, so, uh, so the, the, as an economist, I should have just said to Masood, uh, I need to leave. So the, I was watching this movie with my friend Masood and I should have just said to him, I want to go. I hate this movie time to go. But instead I stuck around and watched the movie. Didn't like it. Didn't, didn't enjoy one minute of watching the movie. Um, and when it was over, I wished I hadn't stayed. Just let me uh, comment on this part, Dr. Sure. Uh, I think of you and your friend walk out of the theater. We can also include the money you spent on. Oh, yeah. So the money we spent, the time we the spent, were both sunk exactly. costs. Yeah. Sunk costs. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because the movie theater is not going to give us a refund. And also, we had a horrible hot dog and popcorn. Um, yeah. 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 So I'm not going to money back for that either. So the idea of the idea of this is a sunk cost. I can't get that money back. I can't get my time back. So now, what is it you actually do want to talk about, Omar? The workforce or the work environment after the COVID world. Are we gonna still use our online resources to continue work from home, for example? Are we gonna get back on feet and get back to our physical campus, for example? So okay. how's, how's the world going to deal with? I got the question, got the question. So it's, a great, it's an excellent question. It's an excellent question. And uh, the answer I'm gonna give you, I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's very important in academics to be clear where your source is and so the source that I'm getting, what the answer I'm going to give you is from a professor of marketing, no less, not economics, but a professor of marketing by the name of Scott Galloway, who teaches at the NYU Stern School of Business uh, in New York City at, at, at New York University. OK, so the answer I'm going to give you is his answer, not mine. Uh, I, I, I'm yeah. Anyhow, so he believes that we're seeing a major disruption in workplaces moving forward, okay? And he identifies three areas of the economy that are gonna be more disrupted, more changed than all others. And so the first area that he's identified is healthcare. So the, the need for you to go to your doctor for routine stuff, that those days are over. You just, for, for like, I have to go to a doctor every, every six months, I'm supposed to go to a doctor and have blood taken and, and test whether my medicine's at a certain level. And then I have to schedule an appointment, whatever, blah, blah, blah. In the future, why can't I go and get the blood done and then meet with the doctor over Zoom? And that, that would make my life so much better. I don't, have to, I don't have to go wait in a waiting room and possibly get sick waiting in a waiting room. So there, there are gonna be changes in healthcare without a doubt. And I think those, those changes are good, okay? The second change, that he identifies is a change that's going to happen in education. Okay, um, your 
currently going for a degree in economics. And I think most everyone in your class is going for a degree in economics, as did I. Happy for my degree in economics. Hope you're happy for your degree in economics. But his point is, 20 years from now, will your children value a college degree? Will it be as valuable for them as it was for you? And he, he believes getting a college degree right now is by far the most valuable thing you can do. So congratulations, you're getting a college degree. But he would argue that 20 years from now, certifications are going to mean more than a college degree. So if you can get certified in knowing Microsoft Access, if you can get certified in leadership from Google, if you can get certified from, you know, all these different, all these different certification programs that are coming out will actually be more valuable to you than a degree from, well, his point is, unless you graduate from Harvard, unless your degree is from, unless your degree is from Harvard or the London School of Economics or, you know, one of the absolute top premier universities in the world, his point is getting certifications is going to be more valuable than getting, um, getting a degree. Um, and by the way, uh, yeah, I, I actually agree with him on that. So I, I, I do. And so um, I don't know if that answers your question. Your, your question was more about workforce. Let me, let me think about it from workforce standpoint. For you now, getting the degree is, is by far the most important thing because we're in 2020. In 2040, if universities don't find a way to innovate and, and to, if universities don't find a way to innovate, then yeah, they're, they're gonna be much less valuable. And that brings me to his third point that he's making. The third point he's making is he makes this point for the United States, but I could argue it, it is it, as true for the UAE. It's as true for the UAE as well. And his point is that there's going to be a huge transition that companies are going to make from commercial real estate to personal real estate. Okay. Because companies have figured, companies have now realized why are we why are we paying for this gigantic building to have our employees come to, okay? And and he's he's like why why do we do that why why are we paying for this in the United States and I, and I don't know the number for the U S but in the United States he says the average company and again I've not fact checked his facts but but Scott Galloway is is a genius and so I, I trust him on this. He says that the average company in the United States is spending $30,000 per employee, $30,000 is 100,000 dirhams, is spending $30,000 per employee to give that employee the office space. So I don't know what UAU is paying, paid for me to have this office space. I have no idea. But if you told me that it was, it cost them 100,000 dirhams, that seems a bit high. But anyhow, we'll just say it's true. Um, but even if that is true, wouldn't it be better for UAU to have four people share this office and have me only come in once a week and then three other days a week, four other days a week, I work from home instead of working from here? That could save the university a lot of money. And if every company thinks that way, then the amount of commercial real estate, real estate the, the, the amount of commercial offices that will be needed will be greatly declined. Now, if they're going to do that, to be fair, companies are going to have to pay their employees more because I need to have a nice office at home. Thank you so much, Dr. Steve. This was great. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to... I appreciate... I, I actually appreciate this opportunity to talk to an econ class because I don't... I, I Earlier this year, I got to go back to my home college, co-college, and talk to econ students there. I've appreciated the chance to talk to an econ class. And so, howdy, Dr. Fernando. I hope you're well. And all econ students, uh, see you at some point, hopefully. <laughs>